Wayne Dixon and I have been doing animated projects together for a few years, and he said more than once, Kent, I need to know how you render animations into the final product. I know enough about modeling, I know a lot about rigging and animation, but I don't know how to make all of that look pretty and finished. And that's why I've made this course. But I have to say that this isn't your typical tutorial course. It's not something to really mimic step by step as in other courses. And the reason is because every animated shot is different. They're all surprisingly complex in their own ways and each with a variety of inevitable problems to solve. In fact, if this course had a subtitle, it would be the art of problem solving. So I don't expect or even want you to try to mimic your way through this course. Rather, I want you to learn with the bigger picture in mind. I want you to learn things like how to do more with less. In other words, maximum output for minimum input, which is a crucial skill to have when producing animations as a small team or by yourself. I also want you to learn how to be familiar with problem solving. With computer graphics and Blender, there's always more than one way to skin a cat. Effective digital artists are open-minded, they think outside the box, and they're resourceful. Those two concepts are the most important things to learn from this course. Within those concepts, there's a ton of tips and tricks throughout that you can store in your mental toolbox and apply to your own animated projects. I say all of that to frame your mind's eye so that you can get the most out of this course. Now, let's outline the planning of this particular micro short because the success or failure of a project depends on planning. No, we won't be pressing any buttons in Blender during this video, and sure, you can skip forward if you'd like, but the following insight is valuable. You may remember in December 2017, CG Cookie posted a brief holiday animation that featured our beloved Melvin character on a frozen lake and a Christmas gift. It was a fun way to celebrate the season. So much so that now we aspire to create variations or episodes of this micro short format as we call it. We want them to celebrate seasons throughout the year and the subject of this course is the Halloween micro short from 2018. So right away, Wayne, Wes and myself began talking about ideas. Wes would serve as producer and as it turns out, voice actor. Wayne would do rigging and animation and I would do everything else. The context of Halloween required, of course, something fun and spooky. That is, Melvin being involved in a fun, spooky interaction or gag with the box. And those variables are going to be consistent for all of these Melvin micro shorts. They're intentionally limited for a couple reasons. Number one, limitations inspire creativity. And number two, this recurring format enables us to reuse assets like the Melvin and box rigs, and recycling assets is, of course, efficient. So if you dream of creating an animated web series, keep those things in mind. For our particular series, the winning scenario was that Melvin would approach the box only to be surprised by a Frankenstein version of himself jumping out of the box. They stare at each other for a moment, and then Frank and Melvin roars at regular Melvin to scare him away. Frank and Melvin then giggles to himself, jumps back in the box to wait for another poor soul to scare. It's a pretty simple scenario overall. But now let's break down that scenario into its moving parts. For one, we're going to need a brand new environment, one that sets the stage for the animation to take place. It of course needs to be spooky and my mind goes straight to a forest at night. So that's one thing we'll need to create. I also need to derive an alternate version of our character. We already have Melvin rigged from the previous micro short. And of course, a derivative of that asset is optimal. I should be able to generate new textures and even add some minor geometric details while maintaining the existing rig. With those new assets created, I can pass them off to Wayne and he will do any additional rigging and the animation. You won't be seeing the rigging or animation in this course because that's not the purpose. Wayne has already published courses on CG Cookie that teach everything you need to know about animating this kind of shot. From there, I will get the animation back and it's pretty straightforward rendering and compositing. One unique aspect was an idea that Wes had for doing a boomerang loop of the animation. This is a clever way to loop without being quite so repetitive. It's also kind of funny that Melvin never seems to learn his lesson about not approaching conspicuous boxes. On the production side, this means that we will need to figure out a way to mirror the animation. Since the camera angle is not straight on, we can't merely flip the rendered image sequence. That would have been nice. Spoiler, this was the most difficult problem to solve in the whole project. Finally, the video editing will be done with Blender's Video Sequence Editor, or VSE for short. This means two versions will need to be edited, 
one film version, so to speak, complete with sound effects, and one silent boomerang loop version. The audio clips for the character and box are courtesy of Wes Burke, CG Cookie founder and aspiring voice talent. And the rest of the audio, I will be sourcing responsibly from the internet, which I will show you how to do. So that's the whole plan for the project. It's very important that we break down the plan like this at the beginning. Otherwise, the team could be on different pages, tasks could be unaccounted for, and ultimately the project either suffers or fails as a result. But that's not gonna be the case for us. The first thing to do now is to create a prototype scene in Blender that will set the stage, style, and atmosphere for the animation, as well as give the team a clear preview of what the final animation will look like.